Hey guys, today it's a different intro because today I am doing a collab with a wonderful and great cook. Her name is Natasha with Trini Cooking with Natasha and we are doing a collab today on a homemade fruit cake. Um, she's going to be doing one fruit cake and I'm going to be doing another and I will have the link below for her recipe and I really um, hope that you guys go and check it out because she is a fantastic cook and she has really great recipes so I'll be leaving that link below in the description box for you guys and today I'm going to be sharing with you my version of a it's sort of like a fruit sponge cake a non-alcoholic version so let's go ahead and get started we're gonna start off with some unsalted butter that is softened at room temperature I have some granulated sugar and I've also got some brown sugar. All the amounts, of course, will be listed below in the description box as well. I've got some all-purpose flour, salt, baking powder, ground cinnamon, uh, ground nutmeg, ground cloves, and ground allspice. Or you can just um, use a fine grater and grate it in there. As well as some mixed essence and some vanilla extract. And then I've also got some dried raisins and dried cranberries. This is what I use because it's what I can find at my local grocery store. Some orange juice. You can use freshly squeezed, but try to get as natural as you can. Uh, three large eggs at room temperature, as well as you're going to need the zest of a lime and the zest of an orange. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to blend our fruits, our dried cranberries and dried raisins. The great thing about this recipe is that you don't really need to soak your fruits for a really long time. Um, usually they soak it for like a year sometimes. So I place it in my blender cup and I'm going to add in my orange juice. I just kind of gave it a little press down when I added it into the blender cup. And I'm going to add in my mixed essence. And I'm using vanilla bean paste, so I'm just going to make sure... And get my spatula and get that all out of there. Now we're going to go ahead and blend this up. If you want to, you can let it sit for about 20 minutes or so after you've blended it so those flavors kind of really come together. But it's not really necessary at all. But of course the flavor will be a little bit more enhanced if you do that. So I'm just going to go ahead and blend that up. After we blend it, I'm just going to go ahead and mix together my flour, salt, baking powder, cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, and allspice. Mix it really well to make sure that all of those things get incorporated. But we're just going to go ahead and cream together. After that, we're going to cream together our butter and our sugars. Now I'm going to mix it for about a minute and then get my spatula, get everything off the sides and the bottom. And I'm going to mix this for about four minutes or so. I really want to take the time to mix it every time I'm making a cake. I like to take the time and mix my butter and my sugar really well so it becomes really nice and creamy, which is going to result in a really nice fluffy cake. So I just mix it and every, you know, every couple minutes or minute I like to get my spatula and scrape everything from the bottom to make sure nothing is sticking and make sure everything is getting incorporated. So after about four minutes, four to five minutes or so, it becomes really nice and fluffy and incorporated and wonderful, just like that. We're going to go ahead and add in one egg at a time. We're just going to go ahead and add in one egg and mix it until the egg is incorporated. Go ahead and add the egg and then mix it. And then add the other egg and then mix it. And then we're just going to go ahead and finish up just adding the eggs one at a time. So there's the last egg. We're just going to mix that just till it's nice and incorporated. After that, I'm going to take my spatula and just run it again around the sides of the bowl. Make sure everything got incorporated. After I got everything off the sides, I just went in for another 30, 30 seconds or so at my blender just to make sure that everything, you know, that was on the sides really gets incorporated into the batter. So after about 30 seconds, we're going to go ahead and add in our blended up fruits, our raisins and cranberries. Now, the great thing about this is that we don't need to soak the fruits. You don't have to soak it in alcohol and all that, but you are going to get the really great flavors of a fruit cake in this recipe. I'm adding in the zest of one whole lime, as well as about a zest of a half of an orange into that, and then I'm going to just get my mixture and combine it all. But 
this is an amazing cake because I really, I can make this any time of year, any time I'm feeling like I want a fruit cake. My little one can enjoy it, but it's just a fantastic cake. So we're mixing it, we just mixed all of those things together, all the mixed fruit and everything. I'm going to add in my flour, half of it at a time, and then mix it until it's mostly incorporated or so. I'm just going to add the first half, mix it till it's mostly incorporated. I don't want to over mix or overwork the flour, and then I'm going to add in the next half of the flour. Mix till it's mostly incorporated as well. And when it looks like it's mostly incorporated, I'm just going to finish it off with my spatula. So it's mostly incorporated. I'm going to go ahead and get my spatula and just get everything off the sides, from the bottom, all that good stuff. Love, love this cake. I've, I've made it so many times during the year. It does not have to be Christmas for me to make this cake. But I've got a pan here that I have buttered and floured really well so that it does not stick. My oven is preheated to 350 degrees, and this is going to go into the oven and bake for about 30 to 40 minutes, depending on the size of your pan. If you use a larger pan, the batter is going to be a little bit thinner. You get a thinner cake, but this pan it will take anywhere I say check on it about 30 minutes but I'll start to pull away from the sides of the pan a little bit and that's it let it cool for about 20 minutes before taking it out the pan and before cutting it and ta -da! this cake is perfection I love it it gets all the great flavors of a fruit cake you get a light sponginess and you even get a little bit of that texture that really moist texture of a fruit cake and as good as this is the first day, the next day it is even better. Those flavors just intensify and it becomes even better. It is amazing. 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 It is a fantastic recipe. I hope that you guys enjoy it. Do give it a try. And just because there's no alcohol in it, you really do get the flavors of a fruitcake. And anyone at any age can enjoy. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.